This is going to be a redo of uh, a video I had up on my geothermal heat pump. And uh, I've had a bunch of requests on, you know, where's the video? And I didn't realize I'd taken it down. So uh, I guess I'm going to do another one. So here we go. So this is my heat pump. And um, it may kick on any time. So uh, I'll try to get through some of this before it gets noisy. Uh, basically this uh, insulated line here, that's uh, well water. It goes in, and then it comes out there, and then it discharges into the canal. Either that or it waters the garden and the lawn. The two copper lines are for what's called a de-superheater, which heats that 80 gallons of uh, water there. So uh, that's the beauty of these things. I can uh, heat all my water off of uh, just running my heat and my air conditioning. And basically there's uh, three different kinds of systems. There's open loop, closed loop. And there's the ones where the refrigerant lines themselves actually run into the ground. And uh, I'm not going to go into that. I'll just go into the uh, open and closed loop. This system here is an open loop, uh, which means I pull the water out of the ground and then I have to get rid of it. I have to discharge it, which means I either water the grass or uh, just dump it in the canal. Um, this is the most inexpensive system to do, but uh, getting rid of the water is going to be the hardest part. The beauty of these things is uh, this is it. There's nothing else. Uh, you got the water pump and this. There's no outside units, nothing like that. And uh, the reason they run so efficiently is because you're running off of groundwater, which I believe mine is about 56 degrees year round. It doesn't matter uh, whether it's winter or summer. And uh, I heat all my water for free as a byproduct. And another byproduct I have is uh, water in my grass and my garden. And uh, instead of uh, trying to dig into this one, uh, I'm just going to show you one out of a boat, which is about the exact same thing, minus the uh, water heating capabilities. But I'll, uh, I'll try to explain to you how that works. So I guess now I'll just try to go into the basics of refrigeration, just to explain it to uh, people who don't know. Um, basically, you have a high side, low side. Um, when you compress gases like uh, R22, R12, 134A, all the different gases, uh, you compress them high enough, they turn to a liquid, they get very hot. And then when you release it, just like spraying uh, a can of, you know, whatever, brake clean, anything like that, it gets very cold. That's basically how they work. Difference is on a heat pump is they have what's called a reversal valve. And uh, that's what creates, you know, make them heat in the winter and, and cool in the summer. And uh, this is just a uh, unit out of a boat, but it's the exact same thing minus... Uh, the ability to heat water and I'll go through that. So instead of having an outside unit you have what's called a heat exchanger. Basically this is just a pipe inside of a pipe and uh, whether it's in reverse or straight ahead it's, uh, it's just going to turn the uh, gas into a liquid and it's going to need to try to dissipate the heat and it does it through this. So the water circulates around and around and around and uh, that's how it removes the heat. So hopefully this isn't too confusing. Uh, basically your compressor is going to compress the gas into a liquid and uh, in, in the cooling mode this would be called the condenser and this would be called the evaporator which would be blowing cold air into your house or actually removing the heat from your house and when it's in heat mode this is going to be the evaporator and the water is going to remove the coolness and this is actually going to become the condenser, which will blow uh, very hot air into the house. Uh, basically all this is, this is a unit out of a boat. It's a miniature version of uh, you know, what I showed you with that big unit there, that four ton uh, geothermal heat pump. And now I'll try to go into uh, how the de-superheater works, which is uh, what heats your water in your house. Alright, now how we heat water. Um, the big fat line on your compressor, it's going to be called the suction line. And uh, the little skinny ones are going to be called the hotline, um, or uh, there's a bunch of terms for it. But anyway, they just basically put a heat exchanger around this. In other words, run your hot water around this line all the way down to the reversal valve. So it doesn't really matter what time of year it is. This is always going to be smoking hot, and so is the head of the compressor. And that's where uh, we harness the uh, heat to uh, heat the water, which is a beautiful thing. makes it very efficient. This is the water tap coming out of the ground, which is uh, going through the unit, and 
and uh, flipped over to the unit and then uh, I'll show you where it does the uh, differential. So we had 63 degree water going in and uh, we got 66 degree water going out. Uh, and that's where it's just removing the heat from the water or the coldness or whatever. And this is for the water heater. Let me see if I can get that to zero in. Uh, 113 degrees there and 109 there, so 110. So it's changing about 3 degrees as it goes, uh, which is nice. Uh, it doesn't matter how cold it is outside or how hot it is outside. The only time that one of these things is the same efficiency as a regular, you know, with your outside heat pump and your inside unit would be, in this case, when it was 63 degrees outside. And the air temperature coming out of the unit itself, uh, I'm keeping the house at 73, which is pretty warm in most people's standards, is uh, right at 100 degrees, 105, somewhere in there. This thing's still kind of winding up. It just started up. So uh, it's not like a regular heat pump uh, where you've got that kind of cold, moist feeling in the house. It's actually, it feels like forced air gas. So in a nutshell, uh, basically we're just dealing with a constant ground temperature. And um, so it works the best in extreme cold and extreme hot. And uh, that's where you get all your, uh, that's where you get all your savings. And, uh, Another nice thing is there's nothing outside, especially at a beach like where I live. Uh, I have nothing out there. There's no outside units, no wires, no nothing. Uh, this is the whole system, and um, it's very efficient. Probably 50% uh, more efficient than uh, my old system that I had, which was two outside units and two inside units. You know, your regular standard heat pumps. Um, and uh, when I say 50%, uh, that's including, you know, the savings of heating your water for free, or, you know, just the savings in general. This is an 8KW diesel generator, and uh, it's got its own whole house transfer switch, and it has no problem running that heat pump. Um, my old system, it wouldn't even have a chance. And uh, this thing actually operates a lot like the uh, geothermal. It uses groundwater to cool it. In other words, it has its own well. It sits right there. Uh, the water runs through the uh, heat exchanger on the generator, cools it, and then it puts it out the exhaust. Uh, so I guess I have a lot of things here that uh, use water to cool it and uh, make life better. I bought this heat pump off of eBay for $3,000. It was scratch and dent, brand new. I still haven't found the scratch or the dent, except for maybe the ones I put in it. Uh, there's no license at all required to uh, put in your own geothermal heat pump because you're not dealing with any gases or sweat and copper or anything like that. Of course you may want to get an electrician to help you with wiring it up. Uh, but I did all this myself, every bit of it. I had two rusted out old units outside and uh, I nursed those things along and I uh, put this thing in uh, in about two and a half years or so. Um, and it's it's nice. Got hot water, got super hot air. Uh, so look into it if anybody's into this. Just remember if uh, you're going to do an open loop system, it's very tough to get rid of the water. If you're going to do a closed loop system, it's just going to be very expensive to uh, put all the coils in the ground or the wells. Another great source of heat I have is I added these uh, lines to the generator. Basically it acts like the heater core in your car, but I mean I can either plug it into water or plug it into uh, you know an air heater. and. Uh, out a tremendous amount of heat so I can use my generator to make heat and power at the exact same time. So anyway I hope that was somewhat informative. Uh, I guess the hardest parts to grasp would be uh, how refrigeration itself works and uh, heat exchangers. I did pull another heat exchanger out and uh, you can see like where water would run through there and then this would be a separate chamber. You'd have uh, you know, going in and out, that would be the same with the refrigeration and the generator. Basically works all the same, just a tube inside of a tube. So uh, I hope that was helpful, and um, I'll try to catch up with YouTube. I've been away for a little while, but uh, I'll try to get up and see your videos and check you guys out and see what's going on. So uh, you guys have a great night, and we'll see you next time.